halkani waa RTM Assalamu alaikum dear listeners wherever you are once again welcome to RTN the talking point it's me Abdi Ahmed Abdullahi your host and uh, today I have a guest uh, he's such a big name in this country Dr Ekuru Aukot who is uh, gunning for the presidency on third way party welcome to the studio thanks Abdi well uh, Dr Ekuru Aukot you've been Chief Executive Officer, Committee of Experts on the Constitution. You've been the Chair of Selection Panel of the IEBC during the Ahmed Isaac time. But uh, we want that pastoralist out there to understand exactly who is Dr. Ekuru Aukot. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, like you said, uh, my name is Ekuru Aukot. I come from a place called Capedo in Turkana. Uh, mm -hmm. place that I think now is a yeah, battle, very time. <laughs> battlefield, uh, okay. you know, for uh -huh. very strange reasons. Mm -hmm. um, well, I was born and bred there. I went to school in Capedo Primary, mm -hmm. I mean, relocated to other places like uh, Nobaringo, Mombasa, eventually ended up uh, at Cabernet Boys to study, uh, you know, for, for my high school. Then I went to study law at the University of Nairobi after which I qualified to be an advocate of the High Court of Kenya and thereafter I went to, to England for a Master's and PhD in Law, uh, during which time I also taught Constitutional Administrative Law and that's where I actually began to gather the expertise I have on constitutional matters. Mm -hmm. So when I came back to Kenya, I, I worked as the Director of Committee, of, I mean uh, Kituwa Chasheria, mm -hmm. which was representing uh, vulnerable groups and people who cannot afford legal, legal services. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he even started actually the Urban Refugee Intervention Program in, in East Lee. Basically, the idea was that how do you give refugees uh, an easy access to legal services where they just walk in? Because we also discovered that there was a majority, of, a lot of refugees were in Isli. And every time they come to Kitocha Sharia, which was in Lovington, in between the police will arrest them. Okay. So I figured out how do I reduce this harassment of the police? So that's how I started the Urban Refugee Intervention Program in Isli, which is now a very, very big program under mm -hmm. Kitocha Sharia. Mm -hmm. From there, I moved to the Committee of Experts, the opportunity to rewrite. Kenya's constitution came mm -hmm. up. I was selected as the CEO of the Committee of Experts, mm -hmm. so I superintended, mm -hmm. midwife that process. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, the selection of the IBC panel came. I was mm -hmm. again selected as the chair of that uh, selection panel, mm -hmm. the Ahmed Isaac. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that, I went to South Sudan also to help okay. them with the reconstruction of their of their Ministry of Defense, mm -hmm. called SPLA then. Mm -hmm. I was in charge of policy and planning. Okay. Uh, but uh, my work on constitutional law did not end there. Okay. I actually just finished last year, very early last year, I was in Liberia mm -hmm. as the chief technical advisor for okay. the UN and the mm -hmm. government of Liberia. Mm -hmm and also wrote a, a roadmap for constitution making for the kingdom, mountain kingdom of Lesotho, uh, but also had the opportunity to be a constitutional law expert in a number of countries that are emerging from conflict, including Tunisia, uh, Egypt, Zambia, uh, Zimbabwe, okay. and many others. So that's really as far as my constitutional law work is. Otherwise, I'm a lawyer by profession. And well, I, well, well, a <laughs> sterling wealth of experience. Right, thank you for that. Why the presidency? Well. First of all, I think any Kenyan, every Kenyan who has been in this country for as long as we can all recall, and maybe we start this questioning about why the presidency from 1963. In 1963, we were promised that this country will eradicate poverty, uh, disease, and ignorance. Uh, and therefore, that means development will come to, to many people. Mm -hmm. So if I were to start my journey from uh, the humble, nomadic, son of a nomadic person from Turkana, I've, see, I've lived the problems this country has. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think for me, I reached one conclusion. Mm -hmm. If there is one thing that has failed this country miserably mm -hmm. and devastatingly, it's actually the question of leadership. Because any country's leadership must be able to steer it to a certain right direction where there is prosperity, there is inclusion. So uh, uh, after participating in constitution making processes in a number of countries, there's one thing that's central that even when you give a country a new constitution uh, that promises uh, good things, like ours is a very developmental constitution, as in you really want to address human rights, you want to address equality. That's why we are devolving power and resources. Mm -hmm. That's why we are having a formula on how to share resources in chapter 12. But one thing is glaringly missing, bad leadership has been part a mark of our country. And therefore, um, I believe that I am qualified mm -hmm. uh, to run this country. Mm -hmm. I have 
I've got ideas which I hopefully will discuss mm -hmm. how this country can move forward, mm -hmm. how we can address some of the problems. Mm -hmm. So as a Kenyan who is qualified to run for presidency mm -hmm. under Article 135, mm -hmm. um, I'm not inhibited because I have also looked at the, 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 the leadership this country has had. Mm -hmm. It's been a leadership that is bankrupt of ideas. Mm -hmm. It's been a leadership that has predicated itself on, on tribal mobilization, mm -hmm. which really is a problem for Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's a leadership that is based on populism, mm -hmm. and yet they end up really doing nothing for the country. It's a leadership that has actually divided this country. So I think what Kenya really is lacking is a transformational response leadership that actually looks at uh, the, the, the concerns, the issues that will take this country forward. And I say this, Abdi, because, again, let me take you back to the 1960s, where we were graded, I mean, we were placed at par with the tiger economies of Singapore, Malaysia, mm -hmm. Thailand, and the rest. In fact, South Korea, exactly. in fact, we were even better than them. Mm -hmm. But 50 years later, these economies have grown so much, the leadership they have grown so much, democracy, if you look at a country like South Korea, mm -hmm. I mean, people can easily gang up and suck their president for corruption issues, related issues. Uh, Singapore, everybody in Singapore is like a, is a millionaire, whether you're a beggar on the streets mm -hmm. or a homeless person, because the GDP there is like 33,000 US dollars per year. So we asked ourselves the question, then what happened to Kenya? 50 years later, you are age mates, people you are even better off, actually far much better than you. South Korea's economy is like 50 times that of Kenya. Mm -hmm. So for me, it boils down to the question of really wanting leadership that, for example, does not want to take advantage of the or potential this country has to make its people look better, mm -hmm. uh, to make this country look better. I personally believe that Kenya has no business being described as a, a, a low income or a middle income economy. I think we are right to be a first world economy. We can do that with all the potential we have. I mean, I come from Turkana. Uh, just, mm. just a minute. Mm. How do you marry constitutionalism with leadership? Well, constitutionalism, constitutionalism, of course, basically is the culture. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is, it, you know, it is is the manner in which you can actually govern a country in the best way. It is the highest law in the land, mm -hmm. and that highest law in the land brings institutions, allocates powers to them, and, and how those institutions interact, relate with each other. And, and there's really no uh, specific uh, characteristics of a leader, whether you're a lawyer or an economist, exactly. you, you could end up mm -hmm. leading a country so long as you have, you have ideas on how you, you can lead. You see, politics is about really how you use power for the benefit of the country. Mm -hmm. So I think for me here, what I bring is, is a competence mm -hmm. that is needed in leadership in any country. Now, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Ikuru, mm -hmm. my question is, mm -hmm. I mean, you, 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 you're taking part in the in constitution making, mm -hmm. I mean, is it, 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 not some, so, something someone can question, okay. Mm -hmm. But we believed, mm -hmm. after the promulgation of the constitution, mm -hmm. that most of the problems would go away, mm -hmm. Why run away corruption while yeah. we have yeah. one of the most, uh, how can I put it, liberalized constitution? Very progressive yeah, constitution. And very progressive, yeah. Yeah. So, precisely for this reason, mm -hmm. that uh, I founded a party together with other friends called Third Way Alliance Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I will explain to you the, uh, why the name Third Way Alliance Kenya. Mm -hmm. So in founding this party, we, we put five key issues on the table. One of them was the need to implement and protect this constitution. Devolution in particular and the rule of law generally. You and I come from the northern part of Kenya. And I'll just give you one simple example just to illustrate the rule of law. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever there are conflicts in our, in our areas and cattle is stolen, which is our wealth, our property, which the constitution pro protects. Your camels, your cows, my donkeys, these are my property. Mm -hmm. And the constitution of Kenya clearly protects all that. But whenever these things are taken on the barrel of a gun, you will hear um, people from out here say, that is cattle rustling. It's traditional practice. Now, as a lawyer, that is a robbery with violence. Exactly. And actually the penalty is that you hang by the neck until you die. Mm -hmm. Now this is the failure to uphold the rule of law in many parts of this country, including where we, the so-called marginalized mm -hmm. groups, come from. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that if you were to have a leadership that will truly implement and protect this constitution, Kenya shall be a developed country. I'll give you another example. In chapter 12 of the Kenya Constitution, there's Article 204. We, we bring in 204, 205, there about. It talks about equalization fund. Now, equalization fund is supposed to be money that is set aside from the treasury to be able to bring, say, a county like Mandera, Wajer, mm -hmm. or Garissa at par mm -hmm. with Nairobi, Nakuru, or Kisumu, whatever the case may be. 
or to Ghana or many other countries. And it's supposed to focus on development, infrastructure, you know, those things that make, you know, people development. Now, no, today, we've had two presidents since the constitution was promulgated. We have had Kibaki, mm -hmm. we now have Uhuru. Exactly. None of them has accounted for us where is the money for equalization fund and which are the countries that you are supposed to equalize. And here we're talking about country, countries that have been disadvantaged. Um, now that you and I have a common background, we're in a program that is broadcast majority. You know the history of NFD, the Northern Food exactly. Districts. Mm -hmm. These are districts that were cut off and mm -hmm. forgotten because they say there was nothing useful that can mm -hmm. come out of those mm -hmm. countries. So when I had the chance to be part of the team that wrote the constitution of this country, mm -hmm. we said, how do we bring back these NFDs into one Kenya? Hold that talk. And that's why we came up okay. with the idea of equalization fund. Okay, okay. Hold, hold your thoughts. Let, 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 me, let me put it this way. Do you mean that there are no safety valves of checks and balances in the constitution that you helped write or make? No, there are checks and balances. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the fundamental thing about a, a new constitution, especially ours that is developmental, mm -hmm. you need a steward. You need people who can breathe life to it. Okay. You know, a constitution can just be a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you must breathe life to it. For example, mm -hmm. devolution must mean something to the people of Mandera, Wajer, uh, Turkana, you know, any part of this country. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we are devolving not just power and decision making, but also resources. Okay. I'll give, let, let's, let's, let's deconstruct that. Mm -hmm. We have 47 counties in Kenya, mm -hmm. 25 of whom belong to so-called NASA formation, 22 on the Jubilee formation. Exactly. Now, I invite Kenyans to look at the last Auditor General report and look at how money was stolen from these counties. All 47 counties are thieves in equal measure. In fact, the Auditor General report uh, concludes that there is disclaimer of opinion, adverse opinion, and uh, what is the other one? There's another opinion. Okay. In other words, meaning that you cannot even audit this. This is money stolen. And yet this is a constitutional issue because we are devolving power and resources mm -hmm. constitutionally mm -hmm. so that you can actually develop and benefit the people. So which is why Third Way Alliance has adopted as one of its main pillars, okay. protecting, implementing the constitution, devolution in particular, and the rule of law. Mm -hmm. So we believe that if we follow, if we have a leadership that actually follows the promise of a new constitution, and, and because as a president you swear to protect and uphold the constitution. Mm -hmm. So you must have a leader that actually believes in this constitution that can actually follow that money that comes through the constitution to the counties. Mm -hmm. not, 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 not micromanaging, but he's saying it's the national government which I head okay. that actually has apportioned this money. Mm -hmm. So I must know why is it that this money cannot be accounted today as we speak. We are going to an election. All, all governors have not accounted for the money. All. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Auditor General says that. Mm -hmm. So that's why we believe in the, the need to implement and, 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 uh, and uphold the constitution. Number two, related to the question you asked me, is we need to hand theft of public funds. In, in that way, Alliance Kenya, which is my party, okay. we don't talk of corruption. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we think that word corruption sanitizes theft. Okay. What hap what's happening in our country is actually is theft is now runaway. Everybody is becoming a thief. Uh, give somebody a responsibility with a kitty and they, they steal that money. So we believe that Theft of public funds must be addressed. Because if you stop theft of public funds, then you're able to relate it to development. You're able to relate it, for example, services in security, policing, health. Mm -hmm. You know, you look, by the time five billion yeah. is lost in the health docket, mm -hmm. can you imagine the ripple effect mm -hmm. on people? Yet we have devolved what? We have devolved health. Mm -hmm. Because the idea is let every Kenyan wherever they are access, access health. Because it's a basic human right. Mm -hmm. Now, so if we don't address corruption, then we are doomed as a country. Mm -hmm. And this is how we propose to address corruption mm -hmm. as a third way. Mm -hmm. Number one, we must replace this entire leadership. We, we believe we must forgive all these people, forgive our water. Mm -hmm. um, because there is no way Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, who I'm competing with, and Raila Amolo Odinga, on the other hand, can highball the other and say, I never contributed to corruption. Mm -hmm. None of them. And I will challenge Kenyans mm -hmm. to look at the last 15 years, mm -hmm. look at all the corruption scandals, mm -hmm. Goldenberg, Anglo Leasing, Kaziko Vijana, NYS, Eurobond, all that. All these people have been in government at one point or the other, and they are not SGR now. They are but exactly where is the problem about so, so the pro Exactly where is the problem? The problem is first in leadership. Mm -hmm. The biggest asset you have in fighting corruption is political goodwill. Now, if you have a political, political, a political group, 
that is part and parcel of the corruption scandals. Mm -hmm. You don't expect them to address corruption. Abdi, it's like you locking up your goats with a hyena in the same in the same same pen. Okay. And if tomorrow a goat is eaten, surely mm -hmm. you can't blame anybody. So mm -hmm. our major problem number one is to replace this leadership mm -hmm. in 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 jubilee and in opposition mm -hmm. because they are all implicated. Okay. Number two, we must be able to prosecute people mm -hmm. in this country. Again, you need a political goodwill that says, you have stolen, you must end up in jail. You must also be able to recover assets. You know, no money has been recovered so far in, in, in this country. <laughs> then, then in that case, case, I think almost 60% of the population will go behind bars. Yeah, absolutely. Let, let's start uh -huh. afresh if need be, because okay. this, this corruption is, and there are many, many, many measures we have actually put mm -hmm. in place, including, by the way, we are going to establish what we call a walk of shame. People who have been implicated or mentioned in corruption must be paraded. People must know them publicly. We are also going to control pricing. You see, the way co corruption is, is, thrives in this country mm -hmm. is through procurement processes. So we are going to create a department that actually controls pricing, caps pricing. We also must make sure that if you are a government supplier, we must know details about you, like your payee, okay. your PIN, PIN number, so that we know when you collect this money, the first person to collect this money from you, because it's an income, is a taxman. Okay. We must also know who you are paying. Mm -hmm. So we have many ideas on how we can end corruption, but top of the list, you must replace the leadership that has orchestrated corruption. Why should Kenyans elect President Uhuru again? Mm -hmm. They will be mad to do that because okay. President Uhuru himself has thrown up his hands in the air and mm -hmm. said, what do you guys want me to do? In other words, he has been defeated. He cannot fix corruption. On the other hand, also the same thing. If you look at an assembly of the so-called NASA principles, none of them can eyeball Kenyans and say, I am clean. So what I'm putting on the table, Abdi, is that mm -hmm. I'm clean. I don't have baggage. Okay. I have ideas on how mm -hmm. to fix this. Mm -hmm. I think Kenyans are likely to trust somebody who is clean, who has never been implicated in corruption. The third pillar for us, which we believe very, very strongly, mm -hmm. is the need to end negative ethnicity in this country. Because negative ethnicity and tribalism is being taken into public affairs mm -hmm. on how resources are being apportioned. If you look at the government of President Uhuru today, it's predominantly what? Kikui Kalenji. Mm -hmm. Now, what, the, what do the rest of the Kenyans think? about that kind of government. Yet, Article 130, again, I bring, to the need, uh, I bring you back to the need to implement the Constitution. Article 130 of the Kenya Constitution says, informing the national executive, it shall reflect the, the national and ethnic diversity of the peoples of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll leave it to the viewers to go to the website of uh, uh, our government and look at the, the national executive. It's predominantly two tribes. Okay, now, sorry. The, 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 fourth, the fourth pillar, uh -huh. so that we can yeah. finish, okay. the, yes. the fifth pillar, uh -huh. is the need to take women and youth into government. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We are saying this, women and youth have been used for the longest time as political flower girls. And yet they are the majority. Yet they are the ones who are impacted the most by bad leadership. Think about our youth, the state of the education today, joblessness, the lack of opportunities. These are issues, and I'm telling the youth of this country, you must be at the table where you can actually make decisions, decisions about things that concern you. And we are telling them, stop being cheerleaders, stop being curious onlookers, participate in the making of a government mm -hmm. that reflects you. And in participating, you actually earn yourself in the seat of that government. Mm -hmm. So those are our five main pillars that okay. we are putting on the table. And again, I want to challenge Kenyans. As you listen to them organize big political rallies, mm -hmm. what issues are these people really putting on the table compared to what we thought were alliance? No, in fact, I'm coming to that. I was coming to that. Yeah. Mr. Presidential hopeful, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. 28th of this month, mm -hmm. guys are hitting the road. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a country where people are used to seeing fuel guzzlers, you know. Choppers. Money brings, yeah, choppers, okay. <laughs> how, 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 are you going, how are you going to change that cycle? Number one, that's a very important question, Abdi. Because people who spend so much money, especially personal money, mm -hmm. to, into public office, Kenyans must know this is the recipe number one for corruption. That begins to compromise that leadership. The moment you begin to spend your own personal money to, to seek a public office, it compromises the idea of servant leadership, which we envision in our, in our chapter six of the constitution. Now we are attacking the idea of money because money should not, should not be the reason, be, be the basis of choosing leaders. Mm -hmm. Because if it is money, Abdi, mm -hmm. we've seen people spend money for many, many decades mm -hmm. into leadership. Okay. Has it gotten us a better country? Has it eradicated corruption? 
Has it eradicated tribalism? Has it given us good roads, super highways? Just no. a big disparity of the rich and the poor. Exactly. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, big money into politics. One, mm -hmm. the moment people put big money into politics, especially their own personal money, they actually begin to recoup it. And that's why the number one corrupt in this country are people in leadership. Not you and I, the ordinary guy. I, but I don't see the policeman asking somebody's G for a 1,000 as, as real corruption. The real corruption that we are fighting is the one where people go into public coffers and take that money to recoup that which they spend. Now, we are going to ask Kenyans to fund us. As a matter of fact, what I've done so far in my own modest way mm -hmm. has been because of Kenyans who have actually supported. A few ordinary Kenyans who just give us money for fuel. I mean, like my posters the other day were actually uh, printed by a, a, a good Kenyan Brazilian. who just mm -hmm. called me and told okay. me, Kuru, I like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Give me your images. And he printed like a million posters for okay. me. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So we are also going to launch a system, a digital system of fundraising. In fact, we are adopting the Barack Obama approach, okay. where we are asking ordinary Kenyan, give us whatever little you have, mm -hmm. because we are not interested in the business of bribing people. We are mm -hmm. not interested in the business of... In fact, you know the reason why they use choppers mm -hmm. and big gaslers? Mm -hmm. Because they don't want to make roads. They don't want to feel the pinch of the bad roads that we have. Really? You and I come from the northern part of Kenya. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to emphasize yeah. this, because it's a reality. Mm -hmm. You want to tell me who will, will jump into a matter, even as SUV, a big one, and drive all the way to Ajero or Mandera by road? But they're coming to northern Kenya. Yeah. Why is it that, I mean, from your informed opinion, yeah. why do you always jump into the bandwagon? I mean, why is it that pastoralists cannot come up with something of their own without being splintered? Number one, among us as pastoralists, we have got what I call political conmen, political intermediaries. People who style themselves as the representation of the leadership of the pastoralists, but what they actually care about their own stomachs. It's about individualism. A lot of those people cannot survive outside politics on their own. Today, whether I'm not running for president or I'm not president of Kenya, mm -hmm. I'll still practice my law and I'll mm -hmm. still make a living. I'll even teach law at the University of Nairobi or wherever, and I, internationally I'll do consultants and still. Like, so I'm not depending on politics to live or to feed me, or to take care of my family. So unfortunately, a lot of our people, uh, so-called leadership, is that they have styled themselves as the brokers of this community. They are playing the same, same politics that other people are playing. And that's part of the problem. And you know the other problem is, it's you and me, Abdi. We have allowed a few individuals mm -hmm. to be the players of politics in, among the personal community, mm -hmm. and therefore become the embodiment mm -hmm. of those communities. Mm -hmm. We are challenging it. In fact, if you look at uh, the many aspirants we now have at the Third Way Alliance, mm -hmm. Kenya, a lot of them are very young people, and we are deliberately encouraging young people to go into politics, because then that way you can actually begin to claim this space. We are easily divided. And yet, Abdi, with all that inclu so-called inclusion, I call it in quote, mm -hmm. into these so-called mega uh, alliances, uh -huh. our problems are still the same. Okay. We don't have a road from Garissa all the way to Mandera. Okay. You don't have a road from Kitale to, to Turkana. Mm -hmm. You don't have a road in those... I mean, it is in those pastoral areas that uh, there's still rule of law. Mm -hmm. I mean, misrule. I mean, uh, banditry, insecurity, thrives. And yet, during political time, we are cheering these other people. Mm -hmm. We are just being used. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry to use this, but I think I'm going to be a bit strong here. Mm -hmm. I think we are almost like just a piece of toilet paper okay. that can be used once you are used with it. You that you are throw it and you just flush mm -hmm. it away. Unfortunately, that's how we have styled ourselves. I think right now, the pastoralist community does not need to beg anybody. With the devolution and the apportionment of resources equitably, mm -hmm. it's up to us to chart a political narrative that will ensure the issues that concern us, like infrastructure, like the, 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 the equalization fund I was talking earlier, okay. they has to be declared. Mm -hmm. But when you have a leadership that is selfish and says, it's me, me, I mean, you're given, I mean, a lot of them actually, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but they have become beggars. Okay. Uh, I mean, every uh, yeah. Friday they're given a chopper, go <laughs> and tell your people this, I mean, they, how can you sell your community like Dr. that? Dr. Ikuro, how, mm -hmm. how, I mean, what, what is your take on, uh, you know, like Governor Nanok, be it Ali Hassan Joho, the kind of, you know, tea rates yeah, exchanging with the president? I mean, where does that uh, place this country? Number one, I think for me, 
that kind of altercation between those governors and the president yeah. just confirms what I've said to you earlier, mm -hmm. that this is a failure of leadership. It's mm -hmm. people who do not understand the, this constitution. Mm -hmm. Because the constitution at Article 6 talks about cooperation and consultation between the two levels of government. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, for example, I mean, Ideally, it says the president should be able to pick a call and call Governor Nanok and call Governor Joho and tell Joho, hey, listen, man, we have a problem with insecurity in Mombasa or in Turkana. How do we fix this? Because our two levels of government are supposed to... So ideally, these are people are supposed to meet up and say, how do we fix this problem? But right now, because of that altercation, they are actually failing Kenyans. Okay. So for me, again, you go back to the idea of failure of leadership and failure to implement and enforce the constitution. The constitution, again, in Article 187, especially now touching on devolution, talks about cooperation between the two levels of government, transfer of functions and powers. For example, so President Uru should be able to call Hali Roba of Mandera and say, we notice that um, you know, this Al-Shabaab menace is becoming too much in, in Mandera. Uh, I want to transfer a little bit of the security resource to you so that we are able to achieve security of Kenyans generally. Okay. So when you have leaders who do not understand their role, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, it is it, it's a, it's a, it's a catastrophe to the, to, to the country. And of course, it's shameful when you have a leader that cannot rise above emotions, okay. party emotions. Uh, yeah. And that's why you, so that's why you see yeah. ODM okay. versus Jubilee, uh -huh. represented by Uhuru Kenyatta, uh -huh. represented by Joho and okay. Governor Nok. Okay. Uh -huh. It cheapens leadership. Uh, Dr. Ekuru, yeah. as a lawyer, mm -hmm. This uh, move by IEBC to amend the mm. ruling made by the High Court. Mm -hmm. To amend or to appeal? To, uh, to appeal. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, the, the ruling that was passed by the High Court mm. on the telling of the presidential results. Yeah. What's your take on that? I think for me, first of all, IEBC right now does not have too much time to fight many wars. Exactly. IEBC should have its eye on the ball, which mm -hmm. is to deliver a transparent successful election in, in August the 8th. Mm -hmm. um, they should be focusing on, on how preparedness towards that. Mm -hmm. um, it's unfortunate that IBC is fighting this and I think sadly it's giving people the impression that IBC is getting instruction from elsewhere because the other people who are not comfortable with that is actually Jubilee, the government, uh, the, the, the current government. Mm -hmm. And I think for me there should be no, the IBC has nothing to worry about. If elections results can be announced at the polling station, IBC has representation Mm -hmm. at, the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the polling station, mm -hmm. at the constituency level. So why, why they will abalu about a national tallying center? Let those results be final. After all, every political party, every presidential candidate will have an agent at the polling station, mm -hmm. at the constituency level. So IBC has nothing to worry. If I was to advise IBC, I would withdraw that uh, appeal okay. and actually focus mm -hmm. uh, on, on preparing uh, uh, for, to deliver a, a successful election in August. Because we must not give any indications that election will be contested. Because, I mean, you know very well what we went through in 2008, 2009, 2009 mm -hmm. 2, I mean, 207, 2008. Mm -hmm. Again, you can see the drums are, are beginning, to, uh, they're being drummed. Okay. NASA is saying uh, they will boycott or there will be mass action. Uh, it's unfortunate. And again, uh, Abdi, uh, sorry to come back to the two formations. No, no, again, there, do you think that Raila Odinga may be trying to precipitate some sort of a constitutional crisis? Uh, I will not be surprised if that is their, 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 their game plan. Uh, because these people have no ideas about how to rule this country, mm -hmm. how to lead this country. For them, they want to be in power. I would not be surprised if they are working towards another uh, grand coalition uh, government. I would not be surprised. Mm -hmm. I would not be surprised because these people feel so bad because like, they have nothing they can do outside politics. They are feeling too much pain for these five years. If you look at the NASA formation, all of them were in the national government of national unity. Mm -hmm. In the last government, okay. they worked together. Mm -hmm. So these are friends. You live near them. So which is why for us at Third Way Alliance, we are saying Kenya needs a truly and honest alternative leadership. There is nothing new that can come out of NASA or Jubilee. They are all political Siamese twins. They are actually uh, two sides of the same coin. Uh, okay. There's absolutely nothing new uh, okay, okay. Okay. from them. This is RTN. You're watching Talking Point. I am with the Dr. Ekuru Aukot, one of our presidential hopefuls, come 8th of August this year. Now, a blotted or a very elongated um, ballot paper mm -hmm. of 16,000 uh, aspirants, mm -hmm. are, uh, thousands of them independent. Do you think August the 8th, given the 
so called shambolic uh, nominations uh, yeah shambolic nominations and then you come to the logistics of IEBC and the historically how it's known i mean with you know this tomb is a uchaguzi as yeah. do you think that one day will make or give room to every kenyan to vote you know it's not it's not difficult it's not impossible I'll give an example. A country like uh, India, mm -hmm. which has a population of, I think, a billion plus, mm -hmm. and I think about 900 million voters, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, the largest de democracy in the world. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They vote, and they, within four hours, the tally is in. What we have failed to do as a country, okay. and this has been something that I've been pushing for since last year, mm -hmm. when, when again NASA was calling for the disbandment of uh, Ahmed, Ahmed Bizak led uh, mm -hmm. IBC, I kept on telling them, let's focus on systems and processes in the electron election management. Once you f focus on system and processes, it won't matter how long, big the ballot, the, the, the ballot is. Okay. It won't matter how many presidential candidates are out there. Mm -hmm. The system should be able to solve. We must make it tamper-proof. Okay. We must make it transparent. Mm -hmm. But they do not want because each one of them is more interested in power. How I get to power by hook or crook. Okay. That's why you can see the same same people are saying that uh, IEBC should have perfect systems. Mm -hmm. Do not even have perfect system in their own political parties. Mm -hmm. Now, if you cannot manage a political party of mm -hmm. a few thousand members, mm -hmm. how can you manage a country? Okay. And I say this of both Jubilee and, 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 and NASA. Uh -huh. uh, because they, I mean, look, what, what they gave Kenyans is really absolute nonsense. I mean, that cannot be democracy. That cannot even be a party with the institutions. <laughs> exactly. How can they run the institutions of the state? Exactly, yeah. uh, Dr. Ikuru. If mm. we go back, if you go back to the chaotic nominations mm. from across the divide, I mean, be it NASA, be it Jubilee, right now guys are crying foul like Peter yes. Kenneth, you know, coming up with independent caucus in central mm. Kenya. How is that going to pan out for Uhuru Kenyatta's re-election, especially in his backyard? I think what transpired in the, in the primaries and the aftermath of this formation of the so-called independence, who, by the way, I think are lying to Kenyans, they are actually not independents, uh -huh. and I'll tell you why. Okay. Um, the reason, the reason, what, that, the aftermath of that is just to tell you that there is really no organization in all these political parties, and it's a shame uh, because these are people who are publicly funded. These parties are publicly funded. Remember, they, they draw from the exchequer, mm -hmm. our taxes. So for me, really, if I have the chance to lead this country, and I pray uh, that I get the chance, mm -hmm. one thing that I will abolish, I will ban, is the funding of political parties. Let parties be funded by their members. They have no business okay. uh, dipping their hand into taxpayers' money mm -hmm. and then end up giving Kenyans this kind of nonsensical, uh, you know, um, nomination process. So really, uh, 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 I mean, it's just an indication. It's actually, if Kenyans are looking for a reason not to vote both Jubilee and NASA, mm -hmm. just look at the primaries. Mm -hmm. Just look at the, how they are organized. Mm -hmm. Now, to the so-called independents, mm -hmm. what is independent about them? Is it independent of thought? Is it because you are jilted out of the of nomination? <laughs> it's nothing. Okay. Because these are people, uh -huh. I mean, and some of them are very shameless individuals, mm -hmm. that were clinging on to Jubilee and NASA as if Jubilee and NASA is what will elect them. They do not have personal convictions and believe that this is who I am. And therefore I sell my agenda to the people. Now that is a true independent. If you are looking for true independence, it's actually Third Way Alliance Kenya. Because from the very beginning, we looked at this, all this formation and we mm -hmm. said, there's really nothing useful that can come out of this formation. Okay. There are tribal formations, mm -hmm. they are predicated on individuals. We are going to give Kenyans a party mm -hmm. with a different meaning, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Even with a different symbol mm -hmm. that actually speaks to our real politics. Okay. And we stuck with it and we, we told our members, Let's develop this party. Let's develop an institution, which is why for us we did not want to participate in that nonsense of, of primaries. We gave all our candidates direct nomination. As because, a, because they believed in okay, this party uh -huh, and uh -huh. they actually, so we did not have a problem to. In fact, even where we, there were two, three guys, mm. they actually sat down. We encouraged them, guys, why don't you sit, sit down, uh -huh. agree on who is the best candidate, and let's work with that candidate. And that's why we are, we are very comfortable as a party. Well, briefly, briefly, mm. Mr. Presidential Hopeful, do you foresee a runoff. Well, it's possible. 
uh, it's possible. A runoff is a runoff is very possible, but mm -hmm. uh, we want to win this election. <laughs> okay. Third Alliance wants to win this election okay. and uh -huh. form the next government. Uh -huh. And should there be a runoff, mm -hmm. well, it's still within our democracy mm -hmm. because you must garner 50 plus one. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and if, if a runoff take happens, I hope Kenyans can begin to look at issues and mm -hmm. actually pick the, the best candidates. Mm -hmm. yeah. And exactly who votes in Kenya? Because if you look at the the primaries that happened, if mm -hmm. we can call them primaries. If there were anything, no primaries, yeah? actually. Uh, I mean, like in Nairobi, mm -hmm. you'd find that, uh, okay, Mike Sonko, mm -hmm. one landslide, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't have, you know, the, the, the parties did not have, you know, those, uh, like, mechanisms someone is asking. They didn't even have registers. Though. Registers yes. of, yes. show me your card if you are a Jubilee guy mm -hmm. or if you are an ODM guy. Yeah. But then, the extreme poor of the society, mm are the ones who are resilient, according to me. But according to you, as, a, a, as an expert in all these things, and as a presidential hopeful, who votes in Kenya? Well, I think for me, very few people actually vote in Kenya, if you want to look at the value of the vote. Mm -hmm. Because the value of the vote has to relate to the issues and the conviction that uh, people sell to you, the agenda. I think for me, tribe votes in Kenya, money votes in Kenya, I think sometimes, like if you look at the, 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 the primaries, for example, mm -hmm. I don't even think members of those political parties voted. Mm -hmm. I think crowds were hired. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that some of the governors or the, the so-called um, uh, favorite aspirants were actually given ballot papers uh, to mark and there was a lot of marking. I think you saw that even on social media, people capturing that on, you know, on, on, on camera. So. I think we are yet to really go, when we really come to voting in Kenya, is when Kenyans will begin to appreciate issues. Where you can actually begin to question, what is Ekuru's agenda for this country, like I have articulated to you, okay. on those far key issues. Just in, in summary, mm -hmm. what is Uhuru's agenda? What is Raila's agenda? Mm -hmm. If Uhuru, for example, promised gender parity in this country, gender equality, and yet is going into another election with a very unconstitutional government, which did not even include women, include youth, why should Kenyans vote for him? But tribe will be on the ballot. They'll be voting tribe because he's one of our own. As if we eat tribe. As if tribe pays for our school fees. Mm -hmm. As if tribe feeds us. So that, that for me is a, is, a, is a very good question, but one question that we really need to be able to engage Kenyans on. What do Kenyans vote on? Mm -hmm. What do they vote in? Okay. Yeah. The, okay, uh, Dr. Ekuru, let's come back again to corruption. Yeah. You, you've mentioned mega scandals. Yeah? A golden bag, Anglo leasing. And none yeah. of them has been closed, by the way. And none of them has been closed. The perpetrators either die Okay, or, uh, okay. You know. The issue here mm -hmm. is, eh, mm -hmm. why is it that nobody is prosecuted of, you know, the big fishes, and we feel today like uh, Abdi Ahmed, who ate up this much money, is in committee? Because you don't expect a thief to shoot himself. That's a nice, yeah. That's a wonderful word. I mean, if I am the robber, okay, and you ask me to prosecute myself, uh -huh. the people who are orchestrating and superintending theft of public funds in this country are the people in leadership, which is why solution number one for us is you get rid of them first. Then you can actually begin to clean. The system is rotten. Pick NYS, for example. Why would a hairdresser called Josephine Kavura? Mm -hmm be able to walk into NYS and walk away with two billion if she's not assisted by the system. How can, you know, Eurobond money not be accounted when the decision to invest on Eurobond comes from the cabinet itself? So who is the thief? So if you are asking uh, the same, same person who is actually stealing from us to arrest himself, I mean, we are a joke. Now, just a minute. Yes. This man is, let's, let, let us assume that they are outside this country, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. in offshore accounts. Could it be, 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 I mean, the Cayman Islands yeah. or where? Mm -hmm. Now, or New Jersey. The question is, is the international community, especially the Western world, are they really honest about uh, helping us eradicate corruption while 
large sums of money because today i mean you can easily trace how, how much dr ekuru has in his bank account wherever yes. it is okay yes. i mean there are no more secret swiss accounts do you think that uh, the western world also helps indirectly in perpetuating corruption in african countries of, especially kenya of course that's not a very new thing i mean uh, the corruption is, is a global phenomenon. Okay. In, 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 in some of those other developed democracies, they do it rather elegantly uh, through either deals, uh, you know, big projects and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but of course, in some of those countries, they actually punish corruption. I mean, I remember, for example, in the United Kingdom not long ago when a series of members of parliament mm -hmm. had to resign and some of them went to, to actually prison. Mm -hmm. And that's because you've got a responsive leadership in that country that says we cannot tolerate certain things. Of course, there are instances where, again, the, the developed world does not want to stick out its neck if the person who is feeling the pinch is, is not asking for help. Uh, for example, do you think the government of Kenya, why is it that the government of Kenya did not return some of the monies that I'm told a former finance minister, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Chris Okemo, Chris Okemo mm -hmm. and uh, another fellow yeah. uh, took to Jersey mm -hmm. Island, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So again, it has to us. do we want to address corruption? And maybe people just look at you and say, you know, it's up to you. Of course there is complicity. Uh, you know, if, if, you don't, if you don't stick out your neck and say, I want help in this way, Bec the same, same way we go back, to, go back to this country asking for grants, uh, signing, you know, a okay. collaboration a, a agreement. But when it comes to theft of public money, I think... I, of course, my appeal to the international community will be that you must be able to stand by the, the general public. If you know that money stolen from the general public for health, for education is banked in your country, you should be able, you should be out to actually declare that and say, we cannot do this. Of course, there are countries that will not tolerate that. Mm -hmm. But what these people do is they choose very weak states mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, that, that, that is also the kind of business they do. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because I don't want to believe that, for example, they will hide these things in a, in a country like England okay. or America okay. or, or some other. Mm -hmm. They probably go to some of those islands which are tax havens. Mm -hmm. They don't care. Okay. You want to put your money in a tax haven country. There is no collaborative agreement okay. uh, between us. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that way. But, but I, I, you need, again, a leadership that actually follows that money. Now, when you have a leadership that pretends that you are fighting corruption, but they are themselves the people who are actually siphoning that money, yeah. you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a chicken and egg argument. Uh, Dr. Ekuru, mm. there is alleged pillage and plunder, in fact, of unpro uh, I mean, unmatched proportions, mm. especially in counties where pastoralists, pa pa past pa I mean, pastoralists live. Oh. Eh? Mm. In your government, how are you going to make sure that funds devolved to to county governments are put into proper use there are many there are many ways you can do that number one you see a national government cannot just disburse funds unless you present to them what they call the county integrated something plan you know a plan mm -hmm. for development mm -hmm. so it's against that that you actually uh, are a portion mm -hmm. money and disburse money but you should also be able there's also an opportunity within the law that if you cannot account for money uh, already spent then of course you cannot get the, the money so I'm gonna I'm gonna follow this money to the last coin. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna use institution of the uh, Auditor General. I'm going to strengthen that institution because today, as we speak, Abdi, the institution of the Auditor General is actually understaffed deliberately. Deliberately, mm -hmm. we, cha we, 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 we we graduate a lot of CPAs, accountants in this country, but that's one institution that does not have enough accountants. And also the public servants working in those institutions are not properly remunerated. And this is the reason why we propose for the salaries and remuneration commissions so that you remunerate and compensate public servants mm -hmm. properly so okay. that then they are able to do their work, so that they are not able to become victims of corruption. Because these corruption cartels in the counties, in those counties, a guy who has stolen 100 million cannot count. And then a fellow who earns a salary of 30,000 comes to investigate that and is being given bribe back by a few millions. Trust me, I think people take money. Mm -hmm. So this is the weakening of our institution. So we need to strengthen the institution. But you need a chief executive who actually follows this money and is not shy looking a governor in the eye and saying, you have not accounted for this money and, you know, debate that. It's not about politics. I mean, Uru today is shy to, to go after governance in, 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 in code or in a... In a 
uh, in NASA okay. stronghold. Sorry, let me interject because you governors there. in Jubilee stronghold uh, do the same thing. Okay, let me interject you there. Mm. What exactly did the president mean when he said nini? Was he implying his clipped powers? By no, the constitution it has nothing to it has craft. nothing to do with that. Uh -huh. It basically has nothing to everything to do with the fact that he is unable mm -hmm. to fight corruption. Mm -hmm. He admitted he's not able to fight. Let me tell you, the power of presidency is the strongest power anybody can have anywhere in the world to shape affairs of, of a country. Mm -hmm. Now, when when the, the chief executive officer of a country says, I, "What do you guys want me to do?" There's nothing I can do. He has, he has thrown in the towel. And what the honorable thing to do would be to actually resign. But, 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 but five ministers, I mean, five ministers were stopped. And so what after he stopped the five ministers? Did he recover the money? Mm -hmm. um, that was a very cosmetic move. A long legal tussle. You are a lawyer. That, that, was, that was a very cosmetic move, Abdi. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Let me bring you closer to the recent uh, you know, uh, scandal. Mm -hmm. The five billion Kenya shillings that disappeared from the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. Do you know who was implicated in that? Some relatives of the, of the, of the, of the president himself. Okay. They were mentioned, the sister and I think a cousin were, were, were implicated. Mm -hmm. So why would you expect Uhuru to punish somebody else who's not a relative when his own relatives actually go out, get away with, them, mm -hmm. with, with, with corruption? Mm -hmm. So that I think lies in the problem we are telling Kenyans. The problem is actually in the leadership of this country. Because if something bad happens, if one of your child in your home is doing a bad thing and you look the other way and you say, I cannot do it, I cannot discipline this child, how do you expect that home to have a leadership, a father figure? That's where the problem is. If there's complicity mm -hmm. in, 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 a, in a father and a mother for bad manners at home, I liken the same to complicity in our political leadership. If the political leadership benefits from corruption, from theft of public funds. Mm -hmm. They will not fight it. Okay. And that's why we are advocating for a clean leadership for this country. We need to open a fresh page. For the last 54 years in this country, the political contestation has all along been either the Kenyatas, the Odingas, you know, this and that. Come on. Mm -hmm. Kenya is a country beyond two families. Okay. Kenya is a country beyond two tribes, mm -hmm. three tribes. We have 43 tribes right now in Kenya. Under your government, mm -hmm. What would you change in the constitution to make Kenya better? I mean, a document that you helped craft. Uh, quite a number of things. Mm -hmm. But the first one that for me I will do even with my eyes closed is to reduce the representation. We are overrepresented in, in this country. Didn't you see that? We saw it. Okay. We warned mm -hmm. about it. We wrote in the report. Okay. But at that time, remember, mm -hmm. people are looking more, about, looking more into CDF. Mm -hmm. And people were saying, how do we devolve, bring resources to us? Okay. Uh, and it, it was one of those compromises we had to make. And that's what we put in, 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 in the amendment processes, in the, in the amendment procedure for the constitution, is that certain, certain issues can be easily be amended through a legislative process or through a referendum. Mm -hmm. So the mechanism again to change is there, even though we compromise on some things. Gender equalization is a big problem that I will affirmatively say it has to be 50-50, both in appointive position or in, in, or in elective position. Mm -hmm. And the way you can do it in elective position is simple. Mm -hmm. Every county, each county, the 47 counties, elect a man and a woman. Okay. You achieve 50, 50, mm -hmm. 50, 50 representation in terms of election. I'm leading my, my cabinet, my government, it has to be 50-50 women youth. Raila Odinga says if he wins the presidency, he's going to cancel some of the mega projects that uh, the Jubilee government has signed with foreign agencies or international governments. Uh, would you do the same? Which ones are these, first of all? Because, because I think Jubilee has not initiated any new uh, project. Okay. So which one is he cancelling? If he's going to cancel any project, then it has to be the project that he himself and Kibaki started. During his time? During his time. As, as the Prime Minister? As Prime Minister. Okay. And he never objected to those things. He's, so, not, he's not coming out clean. So, what Jubilee is doing is okay. to use those projects mm -hmm. that were crafted then okay. as a basis for siphoning money, mm -hmm. as a basis for more borrowing. Mm -hmm. SGR was never started by Jubilee. Mm -hmm. It was started with the, with the Kibaki administration, okay. Kibaki Rail administration. Okay. So what Jubilee has only done mm -hmm. is to use SGR as a basis for more borrowing. Mm -hmm. Right now, what Uru is doing is using that as a political... But you accept, you, you accept that there is immense overborrowing? There is there? immense overborrowing, but you see the borrowing that they are doing is not being plowed back to development of Kenya. Okay. In fact, if you want to know, we have, this is something that we have paid close attention to. Last year alone, we borrowed $700 billion, mm -hmm. but we also stole $700 billion. 
<laughs> right now, Uhuru That's has gone back to China the other day and to borrow about yeah. three point six yeah, billion. billion. Yes, exactly. Allegedly to extend the, the, the SGR to Kisumu. From, to Kisumu. Yeah. That's a political game he's playing. Okay. Because when he I mean in any case, it's way too expensive compared to what Tanzania is doing, compared to what Ethiopia and Djibouti have done, uh, to compared to what uh, Morocco has done. Mm -hmm. So ours is an excuse for thieving, for more stealing. Mm -hmm. So it, they do not really mean it. Because what sane person or rational human being will do create a dry pot in a place like Naivasha? And we also know that that dry port actually ends into their land. Okay, okay. Uh, under your government, mm -hmm. Mr. Presidential Hopeful, that's if you make it. How are you going to reverse... That's when I make it, not uh, yeah. even. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> when you make it, okay. <laughs> How are you going to reverse the moral decay in our society, especially on matters regarding... Nimepata hii position, wacha nyama. nyama. How are you going to reverse that moral decay. Now, the way we describe leadership at Third Way, we see leadership as a value. Okay. That this is a value that must cascade downwards mm -hmm. to the smallest unit. If you are a father in your house, again, sorry to use the example of a family because we, we, we believe strongly in, in, in family mm -hmm. at, at Third Way. Mm -hmm. um, if you are a father figure at home and you have some of the worst manners you are a drunkard, drug dealer, shouts, abuses your children, abuses your spouse in front of your kids. Do you think you're setting a good example to the family? That is the same, same thing about leadership in this country. Mm -hmm. Leadership must be a value that can cascade. People must be able to look up to the, the president of this country, the leadership of this country as a value, and say, we believe in that leadership. The way, for example, Tanzania looked up to Nyerere during his time. You know, the way, the way Bosuanans look at he and Kama mm -hmm. is not swayed by materiality and stuff like that. He's a kind of person who on a weekend jumps into his motorbike and goes to his home and um, celebrates his birthday in prison, sits with guys, you know, not too much pomp and ceremony. That is the kind of value system. Okay. And, and if the leadership does not guide, because, you know, a leader is supposed to be like a shepherd of sheep. Mm -hmm. So you must chaperone your people to a certain direction. Give them opportunity. That way, if the leadership is the embodiment of bad manners, mm -hmm. of corruption, of theft, mm -hmm. of public spot, like we saw the president and the, and the governors yeah. and some of some of the governors, you know, with each other, then we lose the moral, the morality that the country needs. Okay. And for me, I think we are presenting ourselves as a clean leadership for this country with with certain values, with 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 certain convictions and belief, and we hope that Kenyans can give us a chance to present to them an alternative leadership for this country. Well, uh, finally, Dr. Ekuru Aukot, uh, you got uh, two minutes, that's the camera. Mm -hmm. In a nutshell, what are you going to tell Kenyans? This is what I want to tell my fellow Kenyans. The political uh, orchestration or machination in this country has been described as a two-horse race. Yes, these horses have been running for the longest. They are tired, they are corrupt, they use tribe. We are presenting to you a camel. Uh, if you want to, to, to win back this country, to take back this country from this corrupt, from these horses, then only a camel can do that. I say that because Kenya has been in the desert of bad leadership for the longest time. Only an animal, a camel, can drive us to that desert of uh, oasis of good governance. I think reject tribalism reject the corrupt leaders, reject populism, and I would like Kenyans to focus on issue-based politics. Politics is not bad. Politics is about public life. It's education, it's security, it's health, it is values. So we need a leadership that can actually take us to that oasis of good leadership. I think what we have seen in the last 54 years is unfortunate. We have an opportunity to reject that leadership in August the 8th. And please trust me with your vote and I shall deliver for you. Thank you very much for your time, Dr. Ekuru Aukot. Thanks for inviting well, us. That was Dr. Ekuru Aukot, who is a presidential hopeful on August the 8th on uh, Third Way Alliance. I've been your host, Abdi Ahmed Abdullahi. This was Talking Point. Keep it RTN for inspired viewing. So this is it.
halkani waa RTM.